Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I hope you all are doing okay today. Uh, I'm running a little bit late today, but I'm just having one of those lazy days. I hadn't took one in months, so <laughs> uh, enjoying my husband's time. We were watching TV, so I apologize. Um, August the 12th on our Jesus is Calling by Sarah Young. Uh, we're going to read it, and then I've got an article from uh, Crosswalk on, um, let's say I believe, Truth Devotional for Women. Okay, so we're going to read that one. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this day that you've given me for rest, uh, just spending some leisure time uh, with family loved ones and just, you know, catching up conversation and, uh, Lord, I just appreciate, uh, everything that you do in our lives, Lord. Um, all the mighty blessings, Lord, uh, you know, just waking up in the morning is such a blessing to be in your presence, knowing that I'll be in your kingdom one of these days, Lord. And I'm striving to be that every day. Lord, and help me when the times that I fail. Lord, I ask that you just move me out of the way. Uh, I ask that your word come through to those that will hear. Lord, I ask that uh, you receive all the glory, Lord. Um, Lord, I want to pray for all those that are hurting, um, life struggles, loss of family members, sick, um, taking care of loved ones, to kids starting school, uh, work, just all the basic struggles and the load and overwhelming uh, obstacles we come across in just life in this world. And Lord, just help all those and remind them, Lord, that there is a uh, glorious outcome of seeking and being in your presence and living for you, Lord that you are, you know, you have, um, you have a plan. Um, and, uh, we, you know, I just pray that you all seek him and receive that plan willingly from God. Um, you have a purpose, uh, let everybody know, Lord. And then through these troubles and everything, Lord, just, uh, be with them, encouraging, loving, as you always are, feeling your presence, feeling your peace, and filling them with joy, no matter what the situation may be. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Uh, okay, so we're going to get started. Um, again, this is as if Jesus is talking to you. Uh, and so, you know, I just want you to close your eyes. And when I say the words, visualize the Lord Jesus Christ actually whispering the words in your ear. Okay? Come to me when you are weak and weary. Rest snugly in my everlasting arms. I do not despise your weakness, my child. Actually, it draws me closer to you. Because weakness stirs up my compassion, my yearning to help. Accept yourself in your weariness, knowing that I understand how difficult your journey has been. Do not compare yourself with others who seem to skip along their life paths with ease. Their journeys have been different from yours, and I have gifted them with abundant energy. I have gifted you with fragility, providing opportunities for your spirit to blossom in my presence. Accept this gift as a sacred treasure, delicate yet glowing with brilliant light. Rather than struggling to disguise or deny your weakness, allow me to bless you richly through it. You know, um, that's something I, I do want to relate to when you see other people and you think, oh, they're growing in their, you know, uh, 
relationship with God so much more than me. You know, oh, they're uh, escalating in their job so more much. They don't have the troubles and stuff I do. No, they may not at that time have any of the troubles that you do. But I'm sure they do have a struggle somewhere that they've just either came through or that they are going through that's totally different from yours at the time. Uh, I've been through many struggles in life, but not every struggle that this world can give. Praise to be God, you know. Um, we all go through different things. Some of us, you know, God focuses on our weariness, our weaknesses, and that's where a lot of times he'll use our struggles to move us, uh, to grow us, um, you know, for his purpose. So, you know, don't compare yourself to others. We're all uniquely different. You know, you've got timing, you've got situations, uh, it's just the way life is, you know. You may have a friend that, you know, is more abundant in financial ways and got it easy, but they may have it really bad when it comes to having a faithful husband or uh, they're having troubles with their children or their job or with them themselves, you know. Uh, we have our struggles and daily, you know, and it's like don't judge people because you just don't know their story. You don't know what they're going through, what they've been through. And so you gotta pray, lift each other up, regardless how we like their attitudes or anything about them. Love them anyway. Nobody says you have to be their best friend. But you know, in godly love, still pray if that's all you can do. Pray that God works in their heart and that he works in your heart to show you his love, to how to love the people that are hard to love. Um, especially when you think that they're doing an exceedingly better than you. And um, a lot of times you'd be surprised. I've come across people, I was like, oh, I never knew, you know, you can even known you've gone through something like that. And, you know, so stand back and have your understanding before just jumping to conclusions. Um, You know, it's just some stuff guys laid on my heart this week. Uh, so the scripture from this, you know, it's also, you know, in your weaknesses, you know, you rely on Jesus, you know, and he's not going to look down on you. He's not going to disown you or not love you. He's going to help you through it. Okay. Uh, because weakness stirs up his compassion. You know, be truthful for God. He already knows, you know, but he wants you to be that truthful Lord. I'm having this problem, you know, and you might think, well, I whine too much. I whine too much. You know, don't whine. Just be truthful where you're at. You know, Lord, help me with this. Either take it from me or help me through it, which most of the time we have to go through it. Um, also, you know, when we have uh, the weariness, you know, uh, worried about it, he says, knowing that I understand how difficult your journey has been, he knows. He went through so many things, so many temptations, uh, abuse, you know, um, betrayal. Um, you know, there, there's just a list of things, you know, he knows. He's been there. Isaiah 42, 3. A bruised reed he will not break, and in a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. Isaiah 54.10 Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed says the Lord, who has compassion on you. He loves you. He wants to see you exceed in your path for him. 
and he gives us all the tools. We just have to accept it and we have to fight the flesh and not be distracted and keep in it and keep at it. And, you know, I am preaching to self here and I don't like to say the word preaching, but that just came out. Um, you know, I am self. I have put off getting into the word doing what I'm supposed to for him to stay on his path, knowing that calling is on me. And I've put it off and I've run and it's enough. You know, um, I've got to move towards Lord. You know, I feel like, you know, either I don't have a time or this world don't have a whole lot of time, you know, which that time could be huge, don't get me wrong, where I have to get myself where God wants me and further his plan. You know, my children are grown now. I can focus, you know. And that's the hardest thing is finding that balance between family, doing things for yourself and rest, and then doing things for God, uh, being in his presence and giving him that time. You know, sometimes you just got to reach out there, give him that time and stuff first, and everything else will follow along. And I'm seeing that now. And in that, things are better, you know, but... I ask the Lord to prepare me for when the enemy attacks. Because just because I'm there, this world, you know, the enemy's still going to attack. I'm still going to go through struggles. And uh, so just keep that prayed up. And I pray that for every one of y'all listening. Please. Focus on God. Ask for deliverance of distractions. Put them away. Is it hard? Yes. You know, I've let depression keep me in a bed for too long. Keep me on playing a game for too long. And not just depression itself, but I choose, you know. So, I need to choose differently. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's what you need to do. Just make sure you're following Him in everything you do. And most of all, give Him the glory. God is so good. I didn't mean to go so long on that. Uh, but remember, uh, He has gifted you with fragility, providing opportunities for your spirit to blossom in His presence. Accept that gift. me go to our next one okay and it says what to do when your heart leads you astray uh, this is by Lynette Kettle um, you know you gotta think about the times when oh you think you got it all figured out and then God says no it's gonna go my way it's gonna do my timing um, if we would first, which we don't always do this, I don't always do this, I should, you know, you need to think about God, the way he wants things done and timing before you pursue those things. But we tend to do it on our own first and not step back and say, is this of God or not? And you know, that's just part of life. But trying as you more and more as you learn, you will, you know, look at things differently the more and more you know the bible says more and more you know the more it's asked of you uh so you will eventually get to where you can say okay lord is this the path for me is this what you want me to do you know and god will give you confirmation but here we go um again it's what to do when your heart leads you astray by lynette kettle and they're using the verse jeremiah 10 23 Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. Okay? We choose the path. God directs their steps. Okay, remember that. Um, and again, this is the words of Lynette Kettle. Okay? Not me. All right. She writes, For most of my high school years, I dated the same handsome farm boy. He came from a large loving family who I adored with my <clears throat> With my having only one older brother, his sisters took me under their wings, and I loved it. 
as well as his mom and dad, included me in their family gatherings, making me feel loved, accepted, and appreciated. So when he broke up with me at the beginning of our senior year, to say I was devastated is vastly understated. My dream of marrying him, living on the farm near our hometown, being a part of his large family and raising children together was shattered. At 17 years old, my heart was crushed, leaving me feeling hopeless and without a future. She writes, God's will at work. Okay. Sadly, while dating him, I sensed God gently speaking to my heart that our relationship wouldn't lead to marriage. But my heart was too far in at that point, so I rejected God's counsel on that on the matter, believing my dream could still come true despite his cautions. Still the inve inve uh, in <laughs> I'm sorry, still the inevitable breakup happened. Starting off my senior year on a very sad note. My heart was broken knowing we would pass each other in the hallways but no longer spend time together. Restless nights led to long, ongoing conversations with God, asking Him to free me from the sorrow. He truly is the only one who can bear our grief for us, as it says in Isaiah 53, 4. As well, I asked God to keep me from dating anyone again unless it would lead to marriage. My heart was too fragile to bear the thought of ever being utterly heartbroken again. She's got God's timing. After several months of grieving my loss, another guy in school, one who had caught my attention over the years, stepped into my world at just the right time. God's time. I began to recall ways God had gently called my attention to him over the years even seemingly pointing him out to me for a brief moment one junior high afternoon while waiting for the school bus. Although I didn't grasp its significance at the time, I didn't forget it either. As well as several times during high school, it seemed like God was quietly speaking to my heart, proposing the idea of choosing him over my ex. But even with God's prompting, I kept choosing my boyfriend. Thankfully, my husband enjoys knowing how all along he was God's choice for me, even if I, I was resistant. Looking back, I realize how my heart can't be trusted because it can be easily led astray. Jeremiah 17, 9 explains, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Then she write, God has a plan. Although I thought my ex was perfect for me, God had different plans for our lives that didn't include each other. When I was unwilling to break up with him, God led him to make that decision. We as Christians often don't understand how God has chosen us for his purposes and plans. Many of us believe we can choose whatever path we want and God will follow us. But in John 15, 16, Jesus explains, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father, in my name, the Father will give you. <clears throat> then she says, God, lead, God lovingly takes the lead. Thank goodness. <laughs> she writes, once I started seeing how my heart had led me astray is when I began submitting to God's gentle leading in my life. As Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 explains, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight 
you know, some folks think it's just easy. Well, you know, I accept God and Jesus and things, so he should be making my path straight. You know, da da da. This is going wrong. No, in all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Even though I had willingly chosen over and over again to purpose another path, God patiently waited for me to come around, putting my future husband on my radar and giving me opportunities to agree with his path for my life. I discovered how even if we resist God's promptings in leading us, it's not too late. He has amazing ways of working all things together for good in our lives. Romans 8, 28. 2 Corinthians seven ten describes how godly sorrow leads us to repentance. So once my heart realized I can trust God's leading in my life, I repented from wanting and choosing my own way over trusting his will for my life. With tenderness, God lovingly forgave me, not holding anything against me. Psalms 84, 11, and compassionately leading me back on his path for my life. And you know, I ask that if you stray from God's path, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, let God show you what you could have learned from it, strengthen you from uh, you know, she trusted God to lead in her life. You know, he used that uh, for that purpose. So, you know, remember, God has a plan. We have free will. And if we choose to veer off, you know, he will use it to make us even stronger. Um, open our eyes, you know. But most of all, he will get us, you know, if we chose, choose the path back to him, he will provide the steps and he will show us. Um, let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for gently leading me, even at times when I've been resistant to your will and wandered away from your plan for my life. Like Proverbs 4.23 encourages, lead me to above all else, guard my heart, because everything I do flows from it. Help me each day to yield to your will and purpose for my life. Direct my steps to always follow your ways in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay. Thank you all for joining me for joining me today. Um I will probably, I will be seeing y'all in the morning. I'll do a uh, Facebook Live in the morning pop-up. Um, you know, when you see those hurting, be encouraging. Give the word. Don't be hurting yourself. When you're down and out, look to him. Give it to Jesus. He's there waiting right beside you. What can I help you with today? Sister, what can I help you today, my child? You know, let me show you my way. You know, Jesus is saying, come on. You know, um, and if, even if we don't, you know, we take our time before we, you know, we get, get it through our schools. Like, okay, I got you, Lord. He'll be patient. He'll be there waiting. Jesus loves you. God loves you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you again for joining me. Uh, Y'all, please share uh, on the group anything that God leads on your heart. Y'all have a blessed, blessed rest of the weekend, and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.